The U.S. Navy's new Constellation-class frigate, led by the USS Constellation, FFG-62, is turning heads for both its innovation and its obstacles. Why? This ship could redefine naval capability for the next generation, blending power, flexibility, and efficiency in one sleek platform. Yet behind the headlines lie delays, redesigns, and billion-dollar lessons about modern engineering. In this video, we'll explore what makes this frigate extraordinary, why it's delayed, and what its story reveals about the future of shipbuilding. The Constellation-class frigate represents one of the U.S. Navy's boldest leaps towards smarter, multi-role ship design. Conceived to bridge the gap between large destroyers and lighter coastal vessels, this new class aims to pack advanced air, sea, and undersea technologies into a more affordable and adaptable platform. The lead ship, USS Constellation, FFG-62, is being built by Fincontieri Marinette Marine in Wisconsin under a contract awarded in 2020. At roughly 7,300 tons full load, the ship stretches 496 feet long with a beam of 64 feet, making it large for a frigate but smaller than the Arleigh Burke destroyers. Its propulsion uses a combined diesel-electric and gas Codlac, system built around the GE LM2500 Plus G4 turbine offering both efficiency and stealth through quieter electric cruising. The design features 32 vertical launch cells capable of firing standard missile, two and ESSM Block II interceptors, plus room for long-range land attack and anti-ship weapons. On its upper decks, a 57mm MK110 gun and a 21-cell ram launcher protect against close-range threats. For blue water and undersea detection, the frigate carries the Thales Captas for variable depth sonar integrated with the Navy's SQQ 89V16 system. Aviation facilities accommodate an MH 60 or Seahawk helicopter and a Fire Scout MQ 8C UAV, giving the ship reach far beyond the horizon. The Aegis Baseline 10 Combat System, paired with the Spy 6V 3ESR radar, brings destroyer level sensor power to a smaller hull. This combination enables network tracking, cooperative engagement, and rapid reaction against air and surface targets. However, the transformation from concept to production proved challenging. The Constellation's design, derived from Italy's Frem frigate, was originally meant to retain about 85% of the parent design. But once U.S. systems, wiring, and survivability standards were added, that overlap dropped to around 15%. The result? A new ship in all but name, one that demands new engineering, testing, and training. The ambition remains, a frigate with destroyer-class sensors, long-range precision strike options, and quiet anti-submarine performance at roughly two-thirds the price of a destroyer. The real question is whether those goals can be achieved on time and within budget, a topic the next section explores. The Constellation-class frigate began with a promise of affordable capability, yet, as with many large-scale engineering programs, the delivery path has been anything but smooth. According to recent reports from oversight agencies and budget reviews, the lead ship's completion has slipped by about three years from its initial target. Delivery, once projected for the mid-2020s, now points toward 2029. At the heart of the delay are design integration challenges and industrial base constraints. Fincantieri's Wisconsin Yard underwent major expansion to handle this class. Yet workforce shortages, supplier delays, and continuous design revisions slowed progress. By early 2025, construction progress on the lead hull remained under 15% complete, far behind schedule for a program of its size. Equally concerning is weight growth. The ship gained roughly 759 metric tons beyond its original plan, about a 13% increase. Extra weight affects fuel efficiency, speed, and space for future upgrades. Analysts warn that these changes can cascade. Redesigning one system often triggers modifications across electrical, propulsion, and stability calculations, compounding delay and cost. Speaking of cost, the Navy's own fiscal year 2025 documents estimate the procurement cost of the 7th frigate at about $1.17 billion. However, Independent assessments place the real figure for early hulls closer to $1.4 to $1.6 billion once overhead, redesign, and inflation are counted. The lead ship, USS Constellation, 
is particularly expensive because it includes one-time engineering and testing costs. A deeper look reveals why this matters. Each year of delay and each hundred million dollars of cost growth ripple across the fleet plan. The Navy originally envisioned building at least 20 Constellation-class ships, gradually replacing aging cruisers and littoral combat ships. A slower production rate means fewer ships available for global missions, forcing older vessels to stay in service longer. Program reviews have identified one recurring issue, design construction overlap, starting physical construction before the digital design was fully validated. This approach, while intended to save time, often leads to rework and disruption. Lawmakers now call this a tipping point program. If problems aren't fixed soon, the Navy may need to reevaluate its frigate strategy altogether. For observers, the key takeaway is this. The Constellation class remains a potential game changer, but its challenges illustrate how innovation, industrial readiness, and tight budgeting can collide. The next question is what this means for broader naval strategy. The Constellation class frigate is more than a vessel. It's a symbol of how the Navy is adapting to an era of distributed, high-tech maritime operations. Instead of relying solely on large destroyers and aircraft carriers, the fleet is shifting toward a networked architecture of smaller, smarter ships that can share data, sensors, and tasks. In that sense, the Constellation is the linchpin for the next generation surface fleet. Strategically, its arrival supports a concept called distributed maritime operations. This approach envisions numerous smaller but capable ships spread across wide regions, each equipped to detect, track, and respond collaboratively. A constellation operating alongside unmanned surface vehicles or allied vessels could multiply overall fleet reach without dramatically escalating cost. But here lies the concern. While competitors accelerate their shipbuilding programs, the constellation's delays risk leaving temporary gaps in presence and deterrence. Every year of slippage reduces the number of modern hulls available for global deployment and joint operations. Analysts note that the ship's cost growth and late schedule make it difficult to maintain target fleet numbers set by Congress and Navy planners. There's also an industrial and technological dimension. If Fincantieri successfully resolves production bottlenecks, the U.S. could open a second shipyard to build additional hulls, stabilizing schedules and expanding jobs. That decision is expected within the next budget cycle. Moreover, if the design matures and costs stabilize, export versions could appeal to allied navies seeking an American standard multi-mission frigate. Ultimately, the Constellation class stands at the crossroads of technology, policy, and strategy. Its success would mark a triumph of innovation and adaptability. Its continued setbacks could redefine priorities for decades. As the ship approaches critical testing milestones, the world is watching to see whether the Navy can translate ambition into performance. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and comment. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for updates on this fascinating chapter in shipbuilding evolution.